Thank you, Tanu. Uh, <clears throat> like all other speakers, I have uh, come far away uh, to Estonia uh, uh, now. Uh, I was in China uh, for a long time, but I left China at the beginning of December. Don't be, don't uh, be worried <laughs> <laughs> about me. <laughs> I came, uh, yes, I came from London, uh, so uh, where I uh, mostly uh, live, uh, and I am happy to be here uh, in this university uh, where I have uh, many friends and uh, where I uh, uh, worked for uh, some time, having been <coughs> away from my native country uh, for uh, many, many uh, decades. Now. Uh, as it happens with me at least, maybe with others also, I have changed the title of uh, my presentation. Not so, you, often I changed uh, the topic also, uh, but uh, the topic remains uh, mostly. But I would say th that uh, my uh, title would be uh, now more, it would be more accurate than sexier at least. It would be undemocratic liberalism and the rise of populism. Michael <coughs> prefers authoritarian uh, liberalism, I accept uh, uh, that. But uh, I came to this idea, and Tuno mentioned uh, my, uh, uh, one of my books, or uh, uh, lectures given in the Hague Academy of International Law. It is democracy promotion, institutions, international law, and politics. There is no word of populism here, but. Uh, many ideas uh, which are relevant uh, now in the <coughs> uh, context of the rise of uh, populism. But already then, uh, it, it was probably more than 10 years ago when uh, Farid Zakaria wrote <coughs> articles and books about the um, uh, rise of illiberal democracy, I asked myself whether there can be also undemocratic liberalism, uh, so, and I, I believe uh, it, it is uh, possible. Um, <coughs> and, uh, uh, and I believe uh, that, uh, that uh, this, uh, the rise of undemocratic liberalism is one of the reasons of the rise of uh, populism in uh, 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 the world currently. If in illiberal democracy it is democracy that trumps, trumps liberalism, under undemocratic liberalism it is liberalism that has the upper hand and puts constraints on or limits democracy. And my answer is that there can be, and in practice there are political regimes that may be defined as liberal, but which have serious uh, deficit of uh, democracy. And as I will show below, populism is a reaction to uh, the spread of such uh, 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 regimes. Undemocratic, uh, undemocratic liberalism is a political regime where out of uh, the uh, triptych, the government of the people, by the people, and for the people, only the first still fully stands. That's to say, where the participation of the people in the governance is both formal and ineffective, and where the governance is exercised not in the interest of the majority of uh, the people if the governance is exercised at all, uh, about it also uh, <coughs> later. Uh, uh, the current rise of populism is to a great extent, and yesterday uh, 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 we talked about it, conditions by the negative aspects of globalization that the French call la mondialisation malheureuse, uh, the unfortunate uh, effects of uh, globalization. Uh, I am not including the rise of populism and among these negative uh, aspects of globalization since it is not a cause, in my opinion, but a symptom of or response to the spread of such um, aspects of uh, globalization. Besides globalizations and related to it, there are, in my opinion, two revolutionary situations in the world uh, currently. One is geopolitical, 
and the other one is social political, of course, uh, about it uh, much uh, more uh, later. I have written more uh, about uh, geopolitical uh, 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 situations uh, and changes in uh, the world, and uh, uh, therefore, I, uh, but I'll mention it only, and it is related also to the rise of populism. Uh, the first such revolution transformation, the geopolitical, started at the end of the 1980s with a collapse of the Russia stable bipolar system going then through the unipolar moment or decade of the 1990s uh, mostly, and is now moving uh, 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 towards some kind of uh, multipolarity. In my opinion, the 1990s uh, were an historical aberration or anomaly both in international relations as well as in domestic relations of uh, some uh, societies, maybe especially uh, that of Russia. Uh, as I should have been expected, attempts to counterbalance the dominant uh, center which emerged after the collapse of the Soviet uh, Union uh, soon uh, emerged. And in my opinion, until uh, the revolutionary dust settles down one way or other, a new normal and new normals emerges of the old returns, which is a less likely scenario. It is difficult to expect that my main topic, international law, could function uh, normally. The second revolutionary situation, and not unrelated to the first, is the crisis of liberal democracy that was meant to triumph, triumph under the failure of its main uh, uh, ideological and political rivalry, communism. In the 1990s, even many of those who publicly disagreed with uh, Fukuyama, criticized him, were hidden, at least, uh, hidden Fukuyamians. Uh, however, the disappearance of the principal uh, enemy of uh, liberal democracy revealed, though not immediately, internal contradictions of liberal democracy. Uh, that's uh, as to say contradiction between liberalism and uh, democracy. As I showed you in 2008 in the Hague Academy of International Law, I gave uh, lectures on uh, the promotion of uh, democracy. The reason was also that uh, I uh, worked being sabbatical uh, from uh, Kings as a UN representative to uh, Central Asia. Uh, and uh, therefore I was asked to uh, put an emphasis on democratic pr promotion in such countries like Central Asia, so the so-called stands. But uh, most I uh, spoke and wrote about uh, them as well, but I um, mostly concentrated on theoretical issues of democrat uh, democracy and democratization. And I also um, analyzed uh, so-called what I would call uh, dialectical contradictions of uh, democracy. Dialectical be, uh, meaning that they are not absolute, these contradictions, they are relative uh, 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 between the phenomena, phenomena which on the one hand support each other, uh, on the other hand put restrictions uh, to each other. One of them is exactly this uh, liberalism and uh, uh, democracy, and the other one is nationalism and uh, democracy. Uh, the germ of the crisis of uh, liberal democracy is, in my opinion, inherent in uh, this dialectical controversy between democracy and liberalism. It has been like a ticking bomb uh, waiting uh, to explode. Too much democracy may mean less liberalism and vice versa. Most Western, especially Western European uh, uh, societies, have until recently managed uh, this controversy relatively uh, well. However, uh, already for uh, several decades, due first to the rapid globalization of the world, and later all to the, uh, to the changing balance of power in international uh, relations, this 
uh, controversial friend-enemy relationship between democracy and liberalism has become less friendly and more inimical. The spread, of, spread and liberalization of global, particularly financial markets, uh, are curbing democracy. Increasing the overall GDP of many countries, unbridled liberal markets make a few extremely rich while the majority of people are left behind. The wealth caps are increasing practically in all countries. If in autocracies people are powerless vis-a-vis -vis their rulers, in the globalized world people are powerless vis-a-vis -vis global markets even if they live in so-called liberal democracies. This is how economic liberalism is undermining democracy. At the same, and uh, therefore I uh, agree completely with uh, uh, Chantel Mouffe's uh, uh, analysis uh, of the situation uh, uh, which was given yesterday. At the same, same time, the rise of uh, in importance of individual rights and rights of multitude of minorities who quite ag aggressively promote uh, their often newly found identities. This is also undermining social cohesion and common values. This is how social liberalism destabilizes uh, democracy. And it is also interesting uh, to note uh, and important, I believe, uh, that uh, this is not for the first time in history uh, when uh, uh, these, uh, 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 this uh, contradiction or these conflict, uh, conflicts arise. Uh, re recently, I read a very interesting book by a French uh, philosopher, Barbara Stiegler, Il faut s'adapter. It is necessary to uh, adapt. And uh, she shows how at the beginning of the 20th century, two prominent American uh, thinkers, Walter Lippmann and John Dewey, offered different answers to the question of the adaptability of humans to rapid so, uh, social change caused then by the Industrial Revolution. Uh, for Walter Lippmann, it was the situation where there was a huge gap between the natural inclination of the human species to remain as they are, inherited from the long and slow history of biological and so, uh, 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 societal evolution, and the demands of the rapid adaptability to the new environment brutally imposed by the Industrial Revolution. Hence, the central theme of Lippmann's political studies was how to adapt human species to constantly and rapidly changing environment. The fundamental question for him was how to avoid that this tension between the change and stasis, openness and closing, lead the masses to choose nationalism, fascism, and generally all forms of isolationism in their effort to oppose to the rapid change to restore the stasis and uh, isolation. If at the turn of the 20th century it was the Industrial Revolution, also combined with economic globalization uh, then, at the turn of the 21st century it is the revolution in the information technology and also whipped up globalization of economic and especially em I emphasize financial markets that have once again uprooted masses of people in different countries where only those who are easily adaptable to the change can survive. This is like a bio social experiment of the survival of the fittest. Uh, at the fittest are the, those rationally thinking experts and managers who know in which direction the humankind must or will evolve. The masses should be taught to suppress their irrational impulses and follow the lead of enlightened experts who have been able to adapt and readapt to the constantly changing environment. In such a situation, one of the main aims of public education and mass media should be the manufacture of the consent of the masses. And uh, Walter Lippmann was, of course, an expert on uh, that matter. Uh, and this according with the policies uh, defined uh, by experts. 
Um, we see, and uh, John Dewey uh, was uh, uh, very much against uh, this, uh, these experts because in his opinion, experts and politicians uh, make mistakes more often uh, th than uh, masses. And these uh, mistakes have been um, more serious than those uh, made up uh, through uh, democratic uh, procedures. And now we see that this almost a century-old uh, intellectual confrontation that uh, influenced policies of Western governments has acquired a new acuteness with globalization and uh, the IT revolution. It is a conflict between elites and masses, between self-proclaimed progressives and those who are denigrated as populists or their supporters. In his, uh, in my opinion, very interesting book, The Road to Somewhere, uh, the British author, uh, David Goodhart, distinguishes uh, those who he calls anywheres and those who are somewheres. Uh, the French journalist uh, from uh, Le Figaro, Alexander de Vecchio, puts it a uh, uh, conflict between uh, sedentaries and nomads. It is a conflict between those who care for their rootedness or entrenchment in a definitive place, be it a local village, a town, or a nation state, and cosmopolitans, uh, that's to say, those who feel home in different places, like maybe myself uh, also. Um, those masses that hadn't repeated benefits of globalization and were left behind found in social media that was not controlled by liberal uh, elites an outlet through which to reveal their grievances and to mobilize. Their cause was picked up by those who became known as populist leaders such as Donald Trump, Boris Johnson, Marine, uh, Marine Le Pen, or uh, Matteo Salvini, and so on. Uh, uh, Alexander de Vecchio compares the effect of the spread uh, uh, of the internet to that of the invention of the printing uh, press by Gutenberg in uh, 1454. Uh, the latter undermined the power and position of the Catholic Church and the clergy, which had controlled the people's mind. And this led to the emergence of Protestantism as well as religious wars. And Tevecchio asks, but if the invention of the web is going to provoke a similar fracture, this time not between Catholics and Protestant, Protestants, but between traditional elites who are in the process of losing their monopoly, which they have so far had over the mass media and the spread of information, and a new so-called elite that can convey their message bypassing the traditional channels and uh, uh, communications. Populist, populists are accused of dividing societies which, uh, with their criticism of democratically elected governments and uh, bypassing often traditional media, which has been and uh, still remains generally supportive of authorities, being critical only of some aspects or excesses of authorities. But this is uh, confusing, in my opinion, the cause and the effect. The rise of populism is a symptom of a pre-existing malaise, not its cause. The populist parties and leaders have become prominent, namely because Western societies have become more and more unequal and divided. While liberal ideas are prevalent among European uh, elites, values of democracy are today often expressed by populist parties and movements. French philosopher Chantal Del Sol, not to be confused by Chantal uh, uh, Mouffe, uh, is uh, right, but in that respect, I believe they uh, agree with each other. Uh, but uh, Chantal Del Sol is right when she writes, and I quote, the populists, contrary to what some may say, are really Democrats, but they are not liberals. At the same time, universalist elites like those in Brussels are really liberals, who are not any more Democrats 
since they don't like when people vote to limit some liberties. And we have seen in the case of Greece and in some other uh, countries, of course. And uh, I uh, agree with uh, David Coulthard. Uh, he recently gave an interview to uh, the French Le Figaro that the Brexit mess was not necessarily a sign of the end of democracy, but a conflict between two visions of democracy, representative and direct democracy, expressed in Australia through uh, referenda. Uh, I omit my personal experience uh, of uh, a cosmopolitan Estonian living in Britain mostly, uh, so therefore I have uh, no time uh, for that, but I have many interesting, in uh, many interesting encounters with taxi drivers and carpenters who work in my house uh, uh, now, and uh, all they are Brexiteers uh, and all they uh, uh, support uh, Boris uh, Johnson. So, as an Estonian, Having only an Estonian passport, of course, I feel a bit uncomfortable, and I like, don't like Boris Johnson. Uh, but I understand the voters of Boris Johnson. These, these are different uh, matters. Like with ECRE also, I, I may say I despise uh, ECRE politicians, but I understand their voters. But uh, this, this, this is all different. Uh, and then uh, the second point, contemporary democracy, uh, that's to say the government by the people and for the people emerged and evolved within nation states. And in my opinion, it seems to be inseparable from it. Yet economic liberalism with global uncontrolled financial markets, uh, together with social liberalism, putting the primacy of individual with her interests and desires above the interest of society, are destroying social bonds that have helped hold societies together and are, as a result, also undermining nation states, the cradles of uh, democracy. Nationalism, the formation of nation states and development of democracy in Europe went hand in hand. Without nationalism, there wouldn't have been nation states, and without nation states, there wouldn't have been democracy at least as we have uh, known it uh, so uh, far. And uh, I don't uh, understand what uh, is, uh, let's say, in, uh, democracy in international relations or transnational democracy. I have read uh, quite a lot about uh, different ideas, but I, I don't uh, really understand. There is no democracy in international relations. The closest uh, uh, thing uh, to this is maybe the balance of powers, which uh, existed, let's say, uh, after the 1815 Vienna uh, Congress. Uh, th this is the basis of uh, international law. Uh, so without it, so we will, uh, will not have international law. We will have an imperial uh, law, uh, but not international. Uh, then, uh, finally, uh, uh, there is not only uh, undemocratic uh, liberalism uh, expressed, for example, uh, 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 inside or within the European uh, Union. There exists also an, uh, uh, um, what I would call uh, liberal imper imperialism, which is uh, euphemistically described often as liberal international order. And this is also giving additional impetus to the rise of nationalistic populism. Liberal imperialism, that's to say attempts to impose liberal values either by persuasion or by force as universal values to all and to everybody is a wake up call for those for whom let's say collectivistic values, historical traditions, stability or national independence are more or at least uh, not less important than individual uh, liberties. Um, in the 1990s, as I said, uh, many authors uh, prophesied uh, uh, the demise of the nation states uh, that have been the main and is indispensable subject of international uh, law. Uh, and in my opinion, if uh, the state disappears, democracy disappears also, though maybe liberalism uh, won't disappear. 
I don't know whether you have uh, heard or read an interesting book, controversial, but all contra interesting books are contra controversial, certainly, as if by definition. Uh, written by Yoram Azoni from uh, Israel. The title uh, is uh, The Virtue of Nationalism. I don't agree with everything he writes, but, uh, but he is right that when he says that with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, the Western minds became preoccupied with two great imperialist projects, the European Union, which has progressively relieved member nations of many of the powers usually, usually associated with political independence, and the project of establishing an American world order in which nations that don't abide by international law will be coerced into doing so principally by means of American military mind or economic pressure. These are imperialist projects, even though their proponents don't like to call uh, them like that. I don't think that uh, uh, in defense of international law, I say it is not international law which uh, the US is imposing to the world. These, these are different uh, uh, rules, not international law. Um, uh, though it is unfair, in uh, my opinion, to accuse the European Union of being an imperial project, so one may agree that promising or, and acting uh, upon this promise to create an ever closer union, a kind of federal uh, Europe, European political elites have gradually become more and more detached from the aspirations of the people. And it is becoming increasingly obvious that European societies, in contradistinction to political elites, are not or not yet at least ready to throw the nation state into the dustbin of uh, history. And there are more uh, uh, even attempts to create new nation states uh, in uh, 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 Europe, and it is not uh, excluded at all. I remember uh, in 1992, when I already worked in London, uh, then uh, a Scot, a young Scot, came to the Estonian embassy to work there as a carpenter, uh, gardener, uh, and driver. And I asked him, uh, "Why? Why do you work here? I want to learn how to become independent from the UK." So, uh, Scot, and uh, now they, uh, it may become a reality. Uh, I uh, don't, I don't know, but uh, uh, it is not excluded that in uh, some years uh, Scotland may become a new uh, nation uh, state. Uh, um, this is my, let's say, uh, diagnosis of uh, the problems without proposing, of course, uh, any uh, solutions. But I believe for solutions, compromises are needed. Uh, though, unfortunately, comp compromises are seen as signs of weakness, both within and between states. So, with, uh, between the US and uh, China and now the US and uh, Ru Russia. Don't be weak if you uh, make some compromises. Uh, let's say Trump, uh, the, the Democrats are immediately after him. Um, uh, and moreover, in these matters, in these conflicts, uh, there is uh, no absolute truth. And I would like to quote, uh, and that's why, uh, where I end uh, soon, uh, uh, a French philosopher and a, a politician, uh, Luc Ferry. Uh, he uh, writes about uh, some contemporary conflicts. I quote, the truth in contrast to what the majority of, of small-scale moralists think is that many bloody conflicts in today's world are tragic in the sense of Greek tragedies, where the opposing sides represent not of the good and the evil, right or wrong, but quite legitimate, though different claims, differing claims. Had I been a Western Ukrainian of Polish origin, I would have probably wanted my country to join the European Union or even NATO. However, had I been from East Ukraine, from a Russian-speaking family, I would have almost certainly wanted my country to be closely attached to Russia. 
Had I been a Palestinian boy of 15 from the occupied territories, I would without doubt be an anti-Semite. Uh, By contrast, an Israeli of the same age from Tel Aviv would almost certainly despise Palestinian organizations. And though among the world rich, at the end of quote, and though among the world, uh, world's rich palette of ideologies, practices, and trends are also those that represent what uh, one may define as absolute evil uh, and deservedly called for moral outrage. Most often in today's conflict, either between or within states, rare are those where one camp is, uh, camp is absolutely right while the other is absolutely uh, wrong. In geopolitics, it would be advise advisable to uh, aim towards a system of balance of powers modeled after uh, the eight uh, after the 1815 Vienna Congress, uh, but able to tackle the challenges of the 21st century. While in liberal democracies, both progress, progressists and populists toning down their reciprocal accusations should start healing divisions that have become unacceptable in most uh, Western societies. Until those who can be anywhere will not understand uh, and recognize the problems of those who prefer to be somewhere, and vice versa, of course. We are moving towards a tipping point or the point of no return where revolutionary situation ends up with a revolution, real revolution, over an armed conflict if it is between uh, states. Thank you.